Thank you very much, Program Director. <coughs> Excellencies who are present here, former Justice Albisach, the United Nations Independent Expert Professor Manfred Nowak, the Deputy Principal of the University of Pretoria, Professor Stephanie Patton, the Commissioner responsible for the right of the child at the South African Human Rights Commission, Commissioner Angie Makwekla, the heads of United Nations agencies and staff based in South Africa, members of the United Nations Committee on the Right of the Child and the African Union Committee on the Rights and the Welfare of the Child, senior officials from participating member states, members of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the civil society organization, non-governmental organizations, academia, and the media. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to welcome all participants on behalf of the government of the Republic of South Africa to the Southern African Regional launch of the United Nations Global Study on Children Deprived of Liberty. I wish to express my government's appreciation to the United Nations Independent Expert, Professor Manfred Noah, for holding this regional launch of the global study in Pretoria and to the Center of the Human Rights at the University of Pretoria for hosting us as their future African campus. This demonstrates the commitment of the government of the Republic of South Africa, the University of Pretoria, and the United Nations to the outcomes of this global study. Ladies and gentlemen, I just over two weeks ago, on the 20th of November 2019, we collectively commemorated the 30th anniversary of the Convention of the Right of the Child, the most widely ratified human rights instrument. In Geneva, the United Nations hosted a three-day program highlighting various issues pertaining to the right of the child and it was on the 19th November 2019 that Professor Noah officially launched the United Nations Global Study on Children Deprived of Liberty. Professor Noah was appointed in October 2016 as the independent expert to lead this important mandate. And, and so this official launch came after three years of many hours of hard work and dedication by Professor Nowak and his team to ensure the completion of the global study. However, this year also marked the 32nd anniversary of an important conference entitled the International Conference on Children, Repression and the Law in Apartheid South Africa, which was held in Zimbabwe in 1987 at the time, the world was shocked by the revelations of the brutality of the apartheid regime towards children in South Africa. It's well known that many thousands of children were detained in the struggle against apartheid and that children were tortured in South African prisons. This was later confirmed by the testimonies at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Almost all survivors required psychotherapy to enable them to overcome the trauma in their, long li in their young lives. And as stated by Father Trevor Huddleston, at the time, we can agree that a regime which, was, which waged war of oppression against children is morally bankrupt. At the end of the conference, a declaration was adopted entitled, A Cry for South Africa, Free the Children from Apartheid. And this was followed by the United Nations General Secretary, General Assembly adoption of a resolution on 8 December 1988, condemning the torture and inhumane treatment of children in detention in South Africa and in Namibia. This conference of the 1987 has thus been identified as an important turning point 
in the development of a children's rights movement in South Africa. When the new and first democratically elected government came to power in 1994, there were many children in prison. Although political dedication was a thing of the past by that time, there was not a proper system in place to deal with children who were charged with committing crimes. In his opening address to Parliament, President Nelson Mandela said, I quote, the government will, as a matter of agency, attend to the tragic and complex question of children and juveniles in detention and prisons. The basic principle from which we will proceed from now onward is that we must rescue the children of the nation and ensure that the system of criminal justice must be very last, must be the very last resort in the case of juvenile justice, close quote. This decision led to the new government setting up a project committee comprising of government officials and civil society to investigate juvenile justice and to draft a new law on child justice for the country. This committee began work in 1997 and in, in the year 2000 finalized its report on juvenile justice together with a draft child justice bill. The law reform process that resulted in the act consistent of the variant consultation, research, and debate. One of the major no innovations regarding the consultative processes include a consultation study with children. The purpose of this endeavor was to ensure that children's voice were also heard in the drafting of the new law that affects them. Secondly, after the commission finalized its work, civil society also embarked on a series of consultations and un undertook various studies as part of its pre preparations for the bill being debated in parliament. Finally, after the bill was introduced into Parliament in 2002. It was the subject of extensive debates. These debates have enriched the child justice milieu as they have allowed all stakeholders and role players, including parliamentarians, academics, activists, members of the executive and practitioners to examine all issues in great details, listen to opposing views, and reach compromises on controversial issues. The product is a law that creates a new procedure framework for dealing with children who came into conflict with the law. It represents a right-based approach to children accused of committing crimes. However, it also seeks to ensure that to ensure children's accountability and respect for the fundamental freedom of others and through the use of diversion, alternative sentencing, and restorative justice prevents crime and promotes public safety. As a result of these key interventions, South Africa has seen the figure turn around so that now the number of children sentenced is higher than the number of children awaiting trial. This is a positive picture, and the total is indeed very small. When South Africa presented its numbers of children in prison to the global study on children depriving of, the li of their liberty in September 2018, the number of children in prison was 242, namely 132 children awaiting trial and 110 children sentenced. We consider this to be a good news story, showing some of the achievement since the seeds for change were planted just over 30 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, similar to the two previous global studies on children, namely the study on the impact of armed conflict on children led by the former First Lady, Krasha Machel, and the study on violence against children 
led by Polo Saka Pinahara, this global study cannot be regarded, cannot be relegated to the, to the archives of academic study. Instead, considering the need to be given as to how each state can implement their recommendations in the study and raise awareness or promote a change in stigmatization attitude and behavior towards children who are deprived of their liberty. It is for these reasons that Professor Nowak is hosting regional launch of the global study in order to provide all of us here today with an enabling environment where best practices and information can be shared. A successful regional launch from the Oceania region was held in Australia in October 2019, and other regional launches will take place in the Middle East, the Persian Gulf, South America, and Southeast Asia. In Africa, besides this launch for the SADC region, the launches will also be held for the East and North Africa regions. Similar to the consultative approach that was used in South Africa to develop the Child Justice Act, so too this third UN global study was carried out in close cooperation with governments, UN agencies, special representative of the Secretary General, the Committee on the Right of the Child, as well as civil society organization and academia. We are therefore certain that this collaboration approach will all, with all relevant stakeholders, may of who are present in this room today, is the only manner in which we can all effectively address the phenomenon of children deprived of their liberty in our region. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, may I once again welcome you to South Africa and wish you success in your deliberation today as recommendations are shared to enhance our laws, policies, and practice to safeguard the rights of children. I thank you.